Back in April of 2018, Avengers Infinity War came out. It became one of the biggest cinematic openings ever and really showed the world exactly how great superhero movies could be. Because of that, when I went to see it, I was super excited, and like many of you probably, I've seen it multiple times since. I love the action and the storytelling every single time. But I do always find myself in an interesting situation emotionally upon each viewing. The feeling starts like halfway through the movie. All of the characters have been introduced. You know all of their motives, and you know who your favorites are and who you're rooting for. On one side, you have the heroes that are fighting to save something like trillions of lives across the universe. And on the other side, of course, you have the big bad guy that we've been leading up to for a decade in Marvel, Thanos. The problem is, unlike a lot of the villains in movies and shows that I watch, I never hate Thanos or even know if I really want him to lose. I mean, I should, right? He wants to wipe out half of all life in the universe. And on the surface, that's a pretty rotten thing. But as he explains himself more and more, you see that ultimately he wants to be able to decrease the population of the universe painlessly, I might add, by just wishing them away. Because previously he watched his own planet destroy itself as its population grew too large to maintain. He reasons that humans, aliens, whatever is left when he accomplishes his mission will be able to prosper without the pain of poverty or starvation or whatever else bad thing you think about when it comes to overcrowding. And he's going to do all of it at random. So the whole process would be completely fair for everybody involved. And now you might argue, and I can admit, that the movie shows us that Thanos, before anything happens with the Infinity Stones, has already begun his quest in a less than painless fashion by wiping out countless lives through military might. He also shows himself to be brutal and cunning in how he treats his daughters, and he actually throws one off a cliff so that a ghost loyal to the Nazi party will give him an orange rock. The more I think about it, I'll admit the less inclined I am to say that I don't hate Thanos, and the more that I might actually say that, yeah, he's kind of a jerk. Still, thinking about real life and the situations that we all find ourselves in, I think that we can all agree that it's easier to forgive someone that hurts us if we can kind of understand why they did it. Like, maybe they thought that they were doing the right thing this entire time, or they didn't even realize that their actions would impact you negatively. If you couple scenarios like that with the willingness of the wrongdoer to say that they're genuinely sorry, it puts us in a much easier position to want to reconcile that relationship. But that's not always how painful exchanges happen in our lives, is it? To bring it back to Thanos for a second, at the end of the sequel, Avengers Endgame, it's way easier for me to dislike him because he drops all of the reason and logic and he becomes completely motivated by selfishness, greed, and revenge, all the bad things. And similarly, when we're hurt by someone who knows what they're doing and also has no intention of apologizing, it's way harder for us to find mercy for them. Those kinds of situations are when it can feel almost impossible to forgive people. Last week, we talked about apologizing and how wonderful it can be to be forgiven when we're the ones doing wrong. This week, we're going to look at how and why we should forgive others when they wrong us, even when it's difficult. Our relationship with God as humans is completely one-sided when it comes to forgiveness. God is always faithful to us, He's always moving for our good. He's always providing for us, even when we don't see it. And of course, he came down from heaven to live as a human and then die a terrible death at our hands, even though he, as Jesus, lived a sinless life. I mean, seriously, Jesus did nothing wrong for the entire 33 years of life on this earth, but then sacrificed himself in a criminal's death so that we would be forgiven for our sins, of which there are many God made all of that happen because he loves us and he wants to offer us the utmost grace because honestly, 
We need it. And that's why it's always been so interesting to me personally that forgiveness is one of the things that we struggle with the most when it comes to interacting with each other. Particularly if you already consider yourself a follower of Jesus. Forgiveness should be a major part of who you are. But sometimes, even though we've been given such an incredible example for us to follow, it is still so hard for all of us. That includes the people who are on this platform. Because seriously, you may be thinking right now, there is someone that I am really mad at, and I don't want to forgive them. It's too hard. They do not deserve it. And I get that. But it's a necessity. Jesus himself says, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. As hard as it is to hear this, this is our command to love our enemies and to pray for those who persecute us. We don't get to say no. So if it's so important, but we all agree that it's so difficult, how do we approach this topic of forgiveness? I think we start with understanding why we need to do it, even beyond the simple fact and the important one that Jesus told us to do so. And there are two things that I want to touch on there. The first one is that forgiving is healthy. Forgiving someone isn't always about them, though it is a blessing to be offered forgiveness, as we did talk about some last week. If you're the one that was hurt, it's a gift to yourself to let it go. It's really damaging mentally and emotionally and spiritually to continue to walk around with the weight of anger in you consistently. I don't know about you, but if one of my relationships with someone is even slightly uncomfortable because of some hurt floating out there, I cannot function right. I think about it constantly. I can't sleep because I'm playing over the conversations in my head that we've had and even the ones that we haven't yet. Like, what are they going to say if I say this? And then what am I going to say if they say that? I can't even enjoy things that normally lift me up in life because I know that there's still this brokenness that's looming underneath all of my joy. I really, I just can't be myself. And it really sucks to go through life like that for you, for me, and the people that we care about. You each deserve more than that. Each of you is an incredible creation that God has carefully crafted with these amazing gifts. And if you allow yourself to be held down and you put up walls that don't let that light shine out, then you're not only hurting yourself, you're taking away opportunities to be the good in somebody else's life. And ultimately, that's what you're called to do. You're supposed to be the good in the world that represents God. And you can't do that while you're held down by an anchor of pain, just holding on to your hurt. And that brings us back to these words from Jesus. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even people who don't follow Jesus do that. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. So basically what Jesus is saying here is that you are supposed to be different. You're supposed to love people even when they don't love you. You're supposed to give grace even when it doesn't make sense. People are supposed to look at how you treat people and then think to themselves, why are they so different? How come every time I see them, they are giving life to others even when they are in conflict? In that scripture that we just read, we are given the charge to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Jesus said this knowing that it was impossible for us. We physically cannot be as perfect as our Father in heaven, but he was setting the standard that we should strive to achieve. When I was a student, I was having a conversation with one of my friends one time. This was a person who was part of groups that I was involved in. They had the same culture, the same teaching, but everyone knew that they had a problem with forgiving people. So me wanting the best for them continually urged them to do whatever they could when they were having an issue with someone to forgive them. And one day this person, they finally said to me, look, I know that Jesus was forgiving, but I ain't Jesus. And while that's true and fair, that way of thinking is not going to cut it. 
If we want the world to be different, it's gotta start with us. If we want there to be grace and patience in our lives, it has to start with us. The pursuit of perfection does not mean that you'll ever achieve it, but simply choosing to not give your very best effort will lead to far worse. So starting today, you have an opportunity, and I'm encouraging you to take a moment and think about how much less tension would exist in your life right now if you took the action to forgive. How many of your relationships have some holes in them because you feel like someone has wronged you and you're holding on to it? You and this person, you may even be moving through life together with some discomfort that you both feel, but you just refuse to address. Maybe whatever happened was so egregious that you stopped talking completely, and now there's just a painful hole. There's uncertainty and so much anger. You may have to make the very difficult choice of making the first move towards reconciliation, even if you don't feel like it should be your responsibility And even if you feel like that person doesn't deserve it. If you have some hesitation because being vulnerable means possibly being hurt again, then let me say that forgiveness and trust are two totally different things. It's possible to make the decision and do the work to truly forgive someone in your heart and then to treat them with dignity and respect while still guarding yourself if you feel it's necessary until that person truly earns your trust back again. But that process should be done in a civil, healthy way. So here it goes. If you are really looking to be able to let go of some resentment that you hold and to give yourself the opportunity to heal and cut loose the weight of anger in your life in a situation that really needs a remedy, I want you to do these things. First, I want you to be honest with yourself. Are you really ready to let go? Are you truly capable in this current season of your life of forgiving someone and moving past the hurt? Because once you're ready to take that step, you have to really leave all of it behind you. You can't walk around saying that everything is okay while still secretly holding something over somebody's head. And also probably the most difficult thing of all is looking at yourself and saying, am I being fair? Are you looking at the situation and being introspective of your heart and your role in the conflict? Now, listen, it is super important not to assign blame to yourself if you're truly a victim. That is really dangerous. But a lot of times situations are not that black and white. And when we look at what's happened between us and somebody else, we look past or maybe even try to justify our wrongful words and actions while continuing to highlight the other person's wrongdoing. So the second thing that we need to do is to be honest with them. Have you voiced your pain to the person that hurt you? Do they even know that something is wrong? If they do know, have you already told them that everything is okay when it really isn't? Because it's impossible to really get past anything if not every person involved knows what the stakes are or what everybody else is feeling. And finally, with those two things done, we need to continue to look to God for peace and strength. Part of our humanity is sometimes we just physically cannot overcome certain things without help. In some cases, the mental and emotional pain, it may be such that you need professional medical help. And that's okay. It's okay to admit that you should take the necessary steps without shame. But also, dealing with our battles of forgiveness, particularly if we feel that somebody is undeserving, is a deeply spiritual endeavor. When you're struggling to forgive, you can feel the tension inside of you and it starts to degrade you from the inside out. That's particularly true of Christ followers because we have invited Jesus to change us from the inside out. And that necessitates a transformation away from anger and hate. We are actively trying to move towards grace and peace. And the beautiful thing is that you don't have to fight through all of that alone. Your relationship with Jesus means that you have immediate access to supernatural help. It's a strength beyond your own. So call upon it. Ask God to move in you in a way that you can't bring to fruition by yourself. 
God has called you to a beautiful, impactful future, and that future will be built on your relationship with him, but will also involve many relationships with the people around you. So as you deal with hurt and conflict, continue to ask God to shape your heart in his image, loving others beyond what they deserve. Being able to truly forgive even when it's difficult and not only frees others to be more than simply their worst moments, but it frees you to keep growing into who God has called you to be. I'd like to pray for you guys. God, there may be a situation in our lives right now that we just cannot overcome. God, maybe it's new and fresh, but maybe it's been going on for a while. God, whatever state we're in here, we pray that you can meet us where we are and lend us some of your grace and peace so that we might be able to move on not only so that we can be a blessing to someone who has hurt us, but so that we can be healthy ourselves and move on to bigger and better things that you've equipped us for and planned for us. So God, we call out to you now to stand firm with us and to show us how to do this in a way that glorifies you. God, we thank you, we love you, and it's in your name that we pray, amen. 